Hey guys, Brent Hall, Wednesday design video. Got a tough one today because we've got a client that's trying to get an approval in an historic area. And so this is up in Connecticut. Obviously you're dealing with Georgian and federal houses back there, but what really is appropriate, what really will look right, and why hasn't the Landmarks Commission passed this already? Why, why have they shut it down a couple times? So hopefully by creating a narrative that you'll check out, it'll improve it. But let me know what you guys think. We got to get this one passed and it's a challenge. Okay guys, got a uh, tough one. This is up in Connecticut, and this is a client trying to get approval from a design board, an HOA, Landmarks Commission kind of thing. And they've tried a number of different things. This was a salt box version that they tried because it's an historic area of New England. They're trying to, you know, convey this age and and I and I don't think it's a terrible job. I think that sometimes these the HOAs really want something specific but they can't tell you what it is so they end up just saying they don't like the massing or whatever they say and so what i'm doing we're going to try this tomorrow when we talk to them is is sell them on a story okay sell them on putting putting together a narrative for this house so that it is something specific but it's not going to be it isn't trying to be a 1780s house this is a colonial revival house okay in a historic district and so the the thing what i'm showing is is that you know i've changed the windows from a two over two and this is kind of a modern two over two like the two over two is used quite a bit. I see it on, on these modern houses. The Victorian two over two is a much taller, thinner window. This is kind of a modern version of it. And so we're gonna go back with a six over one, okay? The six over one is a very typical sash that was in the 1920s. And so this is conveying that this house was restored, rebuilt, done in the 1920s. So we've got a Colonial Revival entry, we've got this fan light. This house had to be lifted up about five feet. So the garage couldn't be, this part could be. So you're gonna see that's the difference in the heights and stuff that's going on. So really difficult challenge as far as, you know, what they're allowing this customer to do and what they're not. But the six over one windows is, is, is key and important. And, you know, then, you have the traditional things like a graduated fenestration where you've got bigger windows on the bottom and smaller windows on the top. The light pattern of these things are very important. This is going to be an all shingle house on over in the garage as if it was a later piece. You're going to put siding like clapboards over here. So we've got some different pieces and some different things working. Essentially, this is one floor and then this is one floor and you'll step up from this old door up into a kitchen area, but a fan light over a door, a very simple. She doesn't really want a pediment at end, but I just think it's appropriate for that age and that period. Part of the challenge with this, and, and I don't think this is terrible from the front, but you look at the back, right? And I don't think it's the same house. And so, you know, the big picture pane windows, I, I, I don't understand why they divide lights this way, why they decide that, you know, dropping this little line in there is, is appropriate. You see the two over two window block, the railing with the, the wire railing, probably not appropriate, but certainly this looks like, you know, a townhome in Florida, right? And not necessarily something that's historic and that should be should be there. So the challenge on this thing is is it's seen from all sides. And so that may be one reason why the HOA and landmarks is being so hard. But even from this view, we don't really have a story here. This looks like modern additions, right? This looks like modern things. So it doesn't really have a place in time, which is the reason why we're going back with this clearer story of this colonial revival, a clearer story of, you know, six over one. I'm looking at this being something that would be built in the 1920s. If, they're, if they will accept and if they will, you know, buy the, you know, the 1920s story, then what we'll do is we'll we'll come around on this thing and start introducing it here, you know, change this railing, change the size of these windows. And so really from the backside, this is gonna be completely different. Like we'll, we'll completely redo this organization and introduce and put into it 
you know, pieces that tell the story of a 1920s house. And so 1920s colonial revival, maybe with the, the historic piece over here. So this to me is a little bit jumbled, is a little bit, it's not a clear narrative, right? If you look at this and then you look at the, the front side, you know, only because of the two over two windows do you know that it's the same property. And so I, I just don't want to confuse people of kind of kind of what's going on and, and maybe by making that story could he cohesive all the way around, right? And changing those parts and pieces because, well, what's wrong with this? Well, we're going to need to fix these windows, right? So that means this, this, this. What is that? You know, 20% of the back. Okay, so then we're going to change this railing. Well, th there's another 15%. And then we're going to change this roof line. I'm changing 30%, 15%. We'll change the way this is, this is done at the bottom. So, you know, we're picking what five elements and then fixing those five elements will create a more cohesive story, will create a, a better narrative of what's really going on in this house. And hopefully, you know, they appreciate this, but we'll have to see whether they like it and kind of what their thoughts are. Okay, guys, creating that narrative, creating that story, right, that still fits into that neighborhood, but maybe is its, is its own thing. And then certainly combining it with things on the back, combining it so that it's a cohesive story because you actually, you drive across the river and you see this house from the other side. So the backside may be just as important as the front side. So getting that narrative right, fixing those details really is a big deal. So let me know what you guys think. Think we'll pass? Yes? No? Let me know. Thanks.